And this is going to be about how to use BWPy specifically for blue waters. Um, I'm not going to go into best practices of Python in general, but there are some things that are different about BWPy. So this is about how to use BWPy effectively with some of the special things that are going on there. So Python on Blue Waters, as we all know from the last one, is provided by the BWPy module. And um, I don't support um, people using Anaconda or um, other installations of, of Python on Blue Waters because I like to be able to reproduce any errors that people have. And then this way, I can uh, see what's going on and reproduce it uh, on my account and make sure everything's running, running well. Where if I was trying to support multiple Python versions and all that stuff, it would be very difficult. So about Python versioning, uh, this is how I am releasing Python. So there's a, it's using the standard major minor patch uh, versioning scheme. So major, uh, um, major versions are for major breaking changes like changing the default Python, including minor versions, because if you're running, say, Python 3, and you're looking at your uh, site packages for Python 3.5, that will break if, if, um, uh, if you don't uh, change that. So that will include my minor version changes. And there may also be things in the future which need a newer glibc. And that is quite an involved process and requires rebuilding everything, specifying a different dynamic linker. So um, then minor updates. Basically, uh, BWPy is managed using Gen2 pre prefix, and Gen2 is a rolling release um, distribution. So I will sync the portage tree every once in a while and update the packages, and those will uh, create new minor versions. And then I also have patch versions where if people are needing a new package or there's a problem with that version, I will fix it in the patch version. And uh, you can, there's also symlinks to, with some of this stuff uh, so that you can specify what level of stability or bleeding edge you want. So if you want, if your scripts are something that uses only things in BWPy and it's both two and three compatible, you can go ahead and use the latest stable so that you can get the, the latest and greatest stuff and any performance boosts that come out of those new packages. Um, you can do things where your Python version is going to be the same, so if you're providing some of your own packages, you can use that, but you want to use the, some of the uh, whatever is new in uh, in the uh, system BWPy, or you can select for only wanting patches, or you can tag things to a specific version. And right, the default is to tag things to a specific version, uh, and, and then we will update things uh, and let you know about those changes. But uh, yeah. So Python on Blue Waters, uh, this is the state of the current 1.1 uh, branch. So there's uh, Python 2, 2.7, and uh, the, uh, Python 3 is now 3.5 and 3.6. Last year it was 3.4 and 3.5. I think actually 3.3 as well, but uh, those older versions have been dropped. And PyPy and PyPy 3 have come along a lot recently. They recently um, got their uh, C Python compatibility layer, uh, much more feature complete, and that enables running NumPy and SciPy under PyPy. And PyPy has just in time compilation, so that could be a pretty big performance boost if you're doing computational stuff in pure Python. And uh, uh, in 1.2, there will be PyPy 6, which has made quite um, big performance improvements to that uh, compatib cap com compatibility layer. As, long, as well as the um, standard BWPy, which includes stuff for serial no uh, single node performance, there's also 
BWPy MPI, which you should only use on compute nodes because that brings in MPI, and if you accidentally pull something in that uses MPI that isn't a compute node, you will, uh, of course, uh, get that application killed. So you can't, for instance, do a uh, conditional or a try catch around a module load uh, MPI for Pi, or uh, import MPI for Pi um, if you have that loaded, but if you don't, it will see that the package doesn't exist and then you can con conditionally have MPI support in your code. So only use MP BWPI MPI in a on a compute node. Then there's um, some packages that are rebuilt with alternative versions of BLAST, which you can experiment with. The default is now MKL. It used to be uh, libsci, but MKL offers better performance for most things, and you can also use um, OpenMP support with MKL. Then there's BWPI visit and BWPI visit MPI, and um, those are separate modules because uh, it needs an older version of BTK than is what is installed in the um, default. So when you go and use uh, BWPy and actually any Python, you should tell it what version of Python your, um, your compatibility is with. So if you just say Python, that assumes that you um, have support for both Python 2 and Python 3. Um, and this means that this is for running things not on just Blue Waters, but uh, anywhere because some distributions have made Python 3 the, de the default, some are still with Python 2 as the default. So if you want to have portable code, make sure you're tagging things with the version that you support. And speaking of Python 2, stop using it. Um, it's going to be gone in a little over a year, and NumPy and SciPy will not be um, releasing new, any patches at all to the Python 2 versions. Um, and that goes for many other packages as well. They have basically made an agreement with the Python folks to say, we're gonna drop support and, we're, and getting people to agree not to support it in, in the future. So um, if you're using uh, Python 2 when LCCF comes, don't expect to actually have it on the system because there'll only be not very much time left and people are gonna be needing to move away from it anyway. Um, so. <laughs> If you are going to build software against BWPy, there's, um, this is all on the, the website, but uh, you need to export these environment variables so that things that are treated as system libraries um, uh, come last in the include versions. Otherwise, you can get uh, comp compilation errors and things like that if you try to do it with dash i and dash l because of uh, ordering. Um, and you also want to use the CMake that is included in BWPy because it is prefixed to treat those directories as system library directories and um, because that's where it looks for its uh, CMake files. And when you're com com compiling things against BWPy, you should do it in a B BWPy environment execution context. And I'll get into that in a bit later. Oh, right now. So um, BWPy environ um, is what you need to use to enter into a private mount namespace for BWPy. And what that means is that BWPy is contained in a SquasherFest image. So in order to have multiple users using different versions at the same time and to allow updates without breaking things, um, the mount happens within a context that is private to the, the uh, BWPy executable. Everything, the um, mount namespace is unshared, meaning that only things within it get to see those mounts. So, um, that, and because processes can't affect their parent uh, environment, everything has to be done as a sub-process of BWPy environment, and that's really where BWPy is different from running Python on other systems. Uh, and why I do this is because using an image is much faster IOPS, meaning that Python will start up much faster and it will cache all of that. And so you can go ahead and run 
Python many times in a for loop and it will be happy. And that is different from th how things were last year. And uh, another thing to keep in mind is that BWPy environ is something that affects the node that it's run on. So doing it just on the mom node will not affect the compute nodes. So it needs to be, um, what's run on the compute nodes needs to be run through BWPy environ. So why exactly this matters is that uh, the program execution context that's set up by BWPy environ, um, it, uh, It needs to be, um, well, as, as trial processes, everything needs to be a trial process again. So um, that's what this set is set up. Some people think that it has to do with environment variables and stuff like that, and they, they can just run it and then something else, they can do stuff after that, but that's not how it works. You need to run stuff as a sub process. Um, so just a little bit about what BWP environment does is that it sets up the kernel modules, uh, creates a private mount namespace, mounts the image, drops the privileges, and then runs the requested program. And if you don't put anything after that, it will run your shell. So that's how you enter into just running uh, stuff for compiling, for instance, is you're gonna enter into a bash shell or whatever your shell is set to by running that command. Um, so it does actually start up a sub shell. It's not affecting your current shell. So things to keep in mind is that because processes can't affect anything about their parents, um, if you try to run things that, um, so say, if you try to do a source and then another BWP environment that runs it, the things that you sourced won't be available anymore. So you have to do everything um, under the same execution of BWP environment if you want to source things and uh, set environment variables. And um, private uh, mount, uh, mount points are automatically unmounted when the kernel detects that the last um, program using that namespace has ended. So if you run it multiple times, you could, uh, you're going to uh, mount and unmount it multiple times, which will drop the caches and things like that and add a little extra ho overhead, which you might want to avoid. Um, and because, especially because by default, uh, if you're doing things within one context, the kernel will cache, happily cache all five gigabytes of the image and uh, uh, run it, run everything from memory after that. So you really want to take advantage of that um, if you're doing multiple Python executions. And uh, this doesn't actually affect the amount of memory you have available to you if the kernel uh, detects that it needs more memory, it will drop the caches um, automatically. You don't have to worry about this taking up memory. So as I said before, BWPy environ needs to be run on every node that um, is running Python. And some of these things I have wrapped, for instance, I have a wrapper for Python which runs Python through BWPy environ, but of course that will mount and unmount um, BWPy each time you run it. So here's two ways of doing it. You can either um, wrap your entire script in a wrapper, as you can see at the very top with this uh, um, the shebang here. This will start bash that is wrapped in BWPy environment so that uh, that entire script is happening within that context. And um, Another way to do it is to, within the script, um, call BWP environ, but of course any environment changes um, that you make within in here won't, uh, won't propagate or anything like that, so you can't use that to, to source. So actually, this is kind of a more convenient way to do things. And um, uh, you can see down here that uh, this one will run the wrapper version uh, to run on the compute node, um, whereas uh, this one will explicitly use BWI environ. And actually this, this might not work on, with this way because it will see the image version of Python. So actually made a, little, a bit of a mistake there. You need to use BWI environ if you're doing it this way. 
So if you want to do multiple things on compute nodes, you'll need to, you want to app run everything that you're doing within one uh, uh, B2Pi environment context because you'll, if you need to source various things or run things multiple times, you don't want that overhead and you want to be able to have things remember it. So um, you can either uh, execute B2Pi environment on your script or you can make your script itself be within using a uh, BWPy um, environment context. And you can also use um, the path to BWPy environment and then after it, bin bash. So you can, it will also work that way as, a, um, as an interpreter. Virtual env is slightly different because I have patched it to automatically include BWPy environment in it. It, used, it adds this little script down here which fools it into thinking that the script is the Python executable and then it will run the actual executable. So um, this dash A sets the argv0 so that things like pip will use the wrapper script rather than the, the real thing because you want it to be able to, um, having it, have it set, set the shebangs of stuff to use the wrapper. So also keep in mind that this will use whatever BWPy version, which is um, what the, mod, the module version information is at creation and fix it to that version. So you can modify this if you want to upgrade, but when you're creating a virtual env, you're creating it for that version of Python. And you, um, you don't need to module load any, um, you shouldn't need to module load uh, BWPy you might, you, you might need to use, you, should need, you do need to use BBPI MPI though. Um, but the, you need to source your virtual env after those are loaded, otherwise your path will uh, be in the wrong order. Um, uh, let's see. And then if you're using virtual env Python multiple times, um, go ahead and wrap everything in as you would normally with a BWPy environment. And uh, if it detects that it's already been mounted, it will just uh, basically do a nil op. So it will uh, just pass things through uh, um, without any extra overhead. 